Welcome to the How to Pray segment of the Antioch Indie Podcast, where we take time every week to talk about tools and lessons to help you pray, model ways to pray, and host conversations with different people about what they're learning about prayer and how they are growing themselves. I hope this encourages and equips you and that you enjoy today's episode. Hey, welcome to episode two of the How to Pray segment of the Antioch Indie Podcast. Hope you enjoyed week one and that you're back for week number two. Uh, to today, this week, I want to start talking about one amazing tool in helping us learn how to pray is the Bible. The Word of God is just one of the tools that I know that for me personally has been the most impactful thing that's impacted the way that I pray. It's taught me how to pray and helped me grow and given me structure and direction and oops, and all of that. And um, I think that the best way to talk about and model how to use the Word of God in prayer is to really spread it out over a whole number of episodes. And kind of um, what I want to do today is talk about praying for our spouses. So I'm going to model for you and talk you through kind of how I pray for my wife and how I use the Bible to do that and help me with that. So obviously this will be helpful in learning how to and thinking through how to pray for your spouse, but also will show kind of how to use the Bible in general for anything else as well. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Heather preached an awesome message called 3D Bible. And if you haven't listened to it, really encourage you to go check it out. But she did something during that message that was so powerful and got a lot of amazing feedback on it when she was talking about prayer and using the Bible to help in prayer. And she modeled how she prays for me. And what she said, I think, is so true for all of us that, you know, whenever it comes to praying for our spouse or for anyone or anything, it's really kind of hard sometimes to know where to go with it. You know, so she, she was saying how, uh, you know, if, if left on her own, then praying for me can really just turn into like, dear God, thank you for Andrew. Bless him today. Amen. And uh, everybody laughed in the room because I think we all know what that's like. We've all been there. And I would say that for me, like ad- admittedly, praying for my wife is not like something I'm like default good at. And there's been plenty of times during our marriage where I've gone plenty of time without consistently praying for her, knowing what to pray or how to pray. I mean, much beyond like, God, thanks for my wife and love her and bless her. Amen. And, and that's great. And that's better than nothing. But there's so much more available for us. And uh, God wants to use his word to help us learn how to do that. So I'm going to just kind of take you through how I have been growing in praying for Heather and how I've been using the Word of God to do it, and I hope it's really helpful for you. So there's two main scriptures that I pray every day for Heather. And like I said, saying something like, I pray every day, it's like can be super intimidating. And that would, th- that would never be true if it wasn't for the Bible to help me have a place to go to every day. It's a structure, and you know, some days you're feeling it, some days you're not. And when you're not, it's just good to have something to fall back on, like a routine and everything. So uh, it really has catalyzed me and mobilized me to pray for my wife specifically and powerfully every day and it wasn't because like I got good at it or had some special skill so the two things that I pray for her is the first thing I did was uh, and don't be ashamed of doing this if you're trying to pray for your wife or husband or anybody else in your life you know you could google like what are great verses to pray for blank my wife my husband my kids whatever and uh, there's a verse that is really commonly talked about when it comes to men praying for their wives because it's about men praying for their wives it's first peter 3 verse 7 it says likewise husbands live with your wives in an understanding way showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. This is where I start my prayer time every morning because, uh, I one, I love my wife, uh, but also I don't want my prayers hindered for her or for anyone or anything else. And it this verse is really straightforward and convicting that if I'm not putting effort in to live with my wife in an understanding way and honor her for who she is and all of these things, then then somehow that hinders my prayers. And I don't have to understand it to know that I don't want my prayers hindered. So I'm going to start here every morning. And this gives us such an awesome outline, gives me such a great outline. And I just kind of pray through the verse one thing at a time. So, um, you know, I'm I'm just going to go ahead and model this for you. And I don't know if this feels awkward for you, but it could kind of feel awkward for me, especially because we're not even face to face right now. But we're going to do it for the sake of everybody. And I hope this is helpful for you. So this is kind of an example of how I could pray through this verse for my wife. So I'm in 1 Peter 3, 7, looking at it, and I would just kind of start reading it and then pray off of the different phrases or things that stick out as we go. So likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Lord, I pray 
for Heather today, I thank you that she is my wife and she's amazing. And I pray that you would just stir up more love for her in my heart today than I've ever had and that I'd love her well. I pray that you teach me how to live with her in an understanding way. God, help me to understand her. Help me to understand um, her thoughts, understand her heart, understand the way that she sees things. Help me understand her needs. Help me understand her opinions. Help me understand the things that she says to me, the things that she doesn't say to me. Lord, I pray that you would teach me how to live with her in an understanding way. Pray that you give me grace uh, to give her grace for anything that gets dropped or any gap in expectations or any of this stuff, God, that I would just be understanding, that that would be my default, that I wouldn't be critical towards her. Um, I wouldn't be heavy handed, but I'd be understanding towards my wife today. And I repent, God, for any way that I'm, I'm not living with her in an understanding way, any way that um, I'm doing that on purpose or not. Would you just highlight to me, Holy Spirit, where I can understand her better? Showing honor to the woman is a weaker vessel. Lord, I pray that I would honor my wife, that I would show preference towards her in our life, that uh, I would I would lean towards her, that I wouldn't um, I wouldn't just do like my own thing or try to concern myself with me, but that my highest priority would be to show her honor and show her preference. God, I thank you that she is a vessel for the Lord. I thank you for what she carries. Thank you for the things that she holds of the kingdom. Thank you for her personality and her preferences, her opinions. God, I thank you that she is a vessel that holds something, that she's valuable and, and precious. And I pray that I would care for her well today. Uh, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life. Lord, I thank you that my wife is an heir with me of the grace of life. God, would you teach us to live in unity together? Teach us to be heirs together of the things that you've called us to. I thank you today that my calling is her calling, that her calling is my calling, and that we get to do this together. Would you teach us how to live our lives together? And I ask God that my prayers wouldn't be hindered today, that I would uh, treat her well, and that I'd be able to stand with a pure heart before you and pray powerful prayers this morning in Jesus' name. All right, so that's how I would go through First Peter 3, 7. Um, I hope something uh, is helpful for you there. And so, you know, guys, if you're married, I think it's a great place to start, and you could, you know, take that pretty much, uh, you know, apples to apples for your life, um, ladies or anybody else not married to your wife or whatever, you know, you could uh, you could take the principles and apply it somewhere else. Uh, so I, I start there every morning, and then there's a verse that I uh, I just ask God, Lord, what is something else I could be praying specifically over Heather every day? And uh, this is not going to come as a surprise probably to people in our church, but I really felt like the Lord led me to Isaiah 54, and this is a huge chapter for us in our church. This is where our word of the Lord is for 2019. And so I pray this over our church, but I pray this over her as well. And so, you know, I, I'll go kind of go through a, a brief version of this, too. It says, Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. Be not confounded, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood. You will remember no more. Um, so right when I felt like God led me to this verse, it honestly was a little weird because my wife's not barren, and I'm thankful for that. And it was just kind of like, Lord, what you know? What are you trying to say here? Um, but what stuck out to me, you know, first thing it says is sing, sing, O barren one. And I just felt like you know Heather loves to sing. Obviously, she leads worship at church. She has been writing songs all the time. And so it's really cool to think, oh, okay, yeah, I want to pray over her songs and over her singing and, um, you know, not take the barrenness so literally, but what, what could that mean in life? So here's kind of an example of how I'd go through these four verses real briefly. So, uh, Lord, I, I thank you for Heather today. I thank you for her song. I thank you that you have put songs in her heart. I thank you for the voice that you've given her. I pray today that she would sing, that you would unlock the songs of heaven out of her, and that uh, any place that she feels barren in her life, anywhere that she's looking for breakthrough, or anywhere that anybody is looking for breakthrough, Lord, would you give her songs to sing in the midst of barrenness, whether it's hers or anybody else's. I pray that you'd give her songs of faith that bring people into the things that you're calling them to, up and out of their circumstances, that she would prophesy over people as she sings. I'm asking that you would enlarge the place of her tent. You would let the curtains of her habitation be stretched out, that she wouldn't hold back. Lord, that you would uh, enlarge her influence in life, that you would let her capacity be stretched out and give her grace for that. I'm asking that she wouldn't hold back from anything that you're inviting her into, anything that she hears you speak today. I pray that she be lengthened in the Holy Spirit and strengthened in the Holy Spirit today. 
Thank you that you're, you're, you're speaking over her. She will spread abroad to the right and to the left. Her offspring will possess the nations and people desolate cities. Lord, I'm praying for our kids that you would teach her to uh, raise them well and strong as disciples of Jesus today, that they would possess the nations and people desolate cities. And I'm asking, for, Lord, for the people that she's investing in, our church, the people she's discipling, that she would raise them up to be strong in the Lord and they would become people um, who, who fill the empty places in the world, who reach out to the broken the broken nations of the earth. And I'm asking God, I thank you that she doesn't have to fear, that she can fear not. And the promise over her life is that she won't be ashamed. She won't be confounded. She won't be disgraced. She'll, she'll forget any shame. God, I just speak freedom from condemnation over her today, freedom from fear, that she would be mobilized and ready to say yes to God and jump into the things that you're doing. So there's a little example of how I uh, pray for my wife every day and use the Word of God. I hope it's helpful both uh, for you to understand how you can start using the Bible, uh, how to, to pray for things or people, and uh, you know even specifically for your spouse. Such an important thing to be praying for our spouses every day. Uh, like I shared in the first episode, God, it, it, he's, he's leading us in how to participate in our marriage with Him. How He's preparing our hearts for our marriage, and He's teaching us how to partner with our spouses and with Him and what He's wanting to do with us in the kingdom. Um, You know, I don't think we have to be told a whole lot, but our marriages are precious and they're important and they are attacked and so many things try to drive division between us. And so first thing to do in the morning is just clean up those places between you and your spouse, invest and buy into what God is speaking over your spouse that day before anything can be misunderstood or, uh, you know, help you get past any disagreement from the night before. It's just an amazing way to be investing into that relationship. So uh, let us know what was encouraging about this or any questions you have about it. We can obviously always be talking more about it. We'll dive in more as uh, this goes on, but I hope this was helpful for you today. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of How to Pray. We would love to hear some feedback from you. Please comment on our YouTube channel, message us on Facebook or Instagram, and let us know anything that's encouraging you. And let us know any questions that you have about prayer that you would love to hear talked about and discussed in future episodes. Have an amazing day.